Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you for joining our webinar on uh, planning and implementing a new uh, careers website. Um, just as by way of an introduction, yeah, your, your careers website is at the heart of all your talent attraction. Yeah, it really provides your talent acquisition teams with control, it attracting the talent, engaging, and communicating your employer brand. So, yeah, really, a market leading website allows you not only to attract the best quality talent, but also to react quickly to the business needs um, and really to deliver, which is important, you know, as you know, the talent acquisition teams and talent attraction teams are now really highly visible within the business and more accountable than ever. So this webinar is supporting our series of eBooks that we started back in October. The first covered all you need to build the business case. So how you go about actually connecting uh, to uh, the business. And the, 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 the second one, which we're presenting now, is really about what makes a marketing leading website in terms of the actual functionality. So yeah, if you're looking to uh, download the original one, um, you can do this via uh, our website, yeah, Building the Business Case. And the uh, next uh, webinar, uh, sorry, the next ebook that is uh, published um, is now available on the uh, website as well, part two. Um, we're really fortunate to have had contributions from you know, some great people uh, within uh, you know, Talent Attraction, uh, your peers, and, and several of them are here with us today. So let me introduce first uh, Vicky, uh, Victoria Jones, who is you know, head of Talent Attraction at Atkins. Um, she's been with Atkins for 15 years. Uh, part of her role is also around uh, championing equality. Uh, diversity and inclusion, something that you know, many businesses are really focusing at the moment. At the moment. Um, and she's been responsible for the delivery of three uh, career sites, uh, including the recent, the more recent one, uh, which is a global site as part of the wider uh, global SNC Lavalin uh, group. Uh, then we've got Ben. Uh, many of you may already have uh, know of Ben Gledhill. Yeah, he's been um, in talent attraction, you know, talent acquisition for you know. 15 years or so now, uh, starting uh, in agency, also in RPO and uh, in-house. So it's got real breadth of experience in the different uh, approaches in, in TA. Uh, and then finally, uh, Adam Templeman. Adam's got a similar background, uh, you know, agency, RPO and in-house. Uh, he's currently the head of talent um, attraction at IQVIA, uh, which is the data science um, company. Uh, and that's IQVIA contract sales and uh, medical solutions. So a lot of his uh, yeah, talent attraction is focused on global medical salespeople uh, and the associated roles in getting uh, you know, new drugs to market. Uh, he's been responsible for the delivery of two sites at IQVIA, um, but previous to that was um, head of resourcing at Empower, uh, and that was involved setting up setting up new career site and actually um, you know Im implementing a new direct sourcing team. So in terms of what we're going to talk about today, um, there are three real pillars that we we look at. You know, it's about attraction, engagement, and conversion. Um, and these key three pillars support everything uh, around a career site and what you're doing. Um, so firstly, let's talk about you know attraction. Most career sites, you know, in essence, are a brochure site and applicant tracking system. And I use the word car crash together because, you know, it, and I ask the question, when was the last time anybody actually uh, looked at the career site that is supposedly supporting them? And actually looked at, you know, you may have a beautiful brochure site and then you click on uh, jobs and you end up in, you know, Taleo or worse in terms of, you know, a web 1.0 experience. Um, and worse than that, the typical ATS actually, you know, whether it's Taleo, Workday, ISIM, Success Factors, Avature, and they actually hide the jobs. And many people who have, have probably you know, heard from me in the past will have heard me say that. Um, and that's like Amazon or John Lewis putting their products effectively in their stock ordering system. Um, you know, and they're never to be seen on the main storefront. Your jobs need to be found in the same way as if you're looking for a new TV, dishwasher, or holiday. So, yeah, this is something that yeah, Adam yeah, has experienced first hand. He's seen the best and worst of career sites. So maybe, Adam, it's best place to start with you in terms of your experience you know, of attraction over the years. 
Yeah, hi everyone. Thanks very much, DJ. Um, I thought I'd just take a few moments really just to explain a little bit about the journey that, that I went on. And as, as DJ mentioned, I started uh, with the careers website process really at, at, at Empower. Uh, and I was tasked there with um, looking at how we could reduce a, a massive agency spend uh, by setting up an in-house uh, careers, um, sorry, an in-house recruitment function. Um, Basically, the key to that for me was to, to, to get a website that, that worked well and integrated well into the, the applicant tracking system. And at that point, we were using Teleo um, and we needed to move away from the agency spend into uh, direct sourcing and, and, and really cut that, that reliance on agencies. And, and for me, it was uh, we needed a website that, that you know, was out there and, and, and could be seen and noticed by um, by, by the candidates, but also more importantly, had a seamless integration into uh, the applicant tracking system, which was Teleo. Um, so, so that was a good few years ago now, probably six or seven years ago, that we we implemented that in in Empower. Uh, and you know, just to, just as uh, as an example, we reduced agency reliance from from 98% down to about 11% within 12 12 months, um, and reduced agency spend by by 1.5 million. So. I think it, that just gets to highlight really the importance of, of, of having a decent career site, but there's a lot more that sits behind the site. Um, and then I moved on, as DJ said, to, to Ikevia, which you see on the screen in front of you. Um, and I guess we had the same issue. There was a, uh, what was a global career site that was linked into uh, Taleo, uh, but nobody could really find the site. It was okay when you found it and you landed on it. Some of the content was quite rich. Uh, but in order for Google to be able to find the site, it was just just not impossible. Um, we launched the new career site uh, probably about three years ago, um, and pretty much within three months, we saw a huge increase in the number of applications. Um, things took a slight turn for the worst, and we moved as an organization away from Taleo onto Workday, and the corporate decision was made that uh, we didn't want to integrate into what was the DV4 format website, and we moved back on to uh, the global career site that was offered by IQVIA. Um, within about four months, we saw applications across Europe to um, our medical sales rep vacancies drop by over 50%. Um, so towards the middle of last year, the business uh, were up in arms about the number of applications we were getting and therefore the number of conversions. And then we relaunched the site back to the one that you see on the screen in front of you. Um, that went live again in November, um, and we're now beginning to see uh, an uptake in applications again across Europe. And as a consequence, actually, of that, we are about to roll out in Japan, the US, and Latin America. Um, so it's, it's all well and good and having a good site, as I said, but you know the site needs to be found certainly by Google, uh, as we know most people do their job searches initially in, in Google. Um, so. What you see here on the slide in front of you is, is all about what I call Google friendly URLs, and I'm not the technical person on the call, but um, here we have one of our very specialist roles of an oncology engagement manager in London. Um, and we know that people uh, when or, or job seekers, when they search in Google, tend to search by uh, job title um, and location. And, and for us, it's very important um, for us to, to, to be ranked, I, I guess, as high up um, the Google Google rankings as, as possible, um, and for us, that's achieved by the integration that we have um, currently into now what is Workday, um, but also to ensure that um, when we do rank, we start to rank above um, some of the job boards um, and uh, it, it, indeed some of the recruitment agencies. And as you see with this one here, we're actually ranking higher than indeed in Glassdoor. And I think that um, this is quite important because. Certainly in my experience, candidates have a tendency to click on a direct employer uh, rather than an agency. And, and clearly if we're being able to rank high up on, on, on uh, the Google searches, uh, then we're gonna get more applicants coming and landing on our, on our pages. Um, as I mentioned about Google rankings, I think they're important. Here you see a slide from the relaunch of our site uh, in last October. Um, it is uh, qu quite clear that it does take some time for the pages to be ranked by Google. Um, and I think from our perspective, um, lots of the keywords that we get our talent acquisition specialists globally to type into their, the, the job descriptions, but also 
uh, the job titles and locations are the ones that are going to get um, filtered and ranked by Google and start to give the importance to, um, to, 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 to the job that they're searching and therefore the application. Um, also interesting to know that um, just uh, on that previous slide, DJ, interesting to know that certainly when we were just using Teleo and not a, uh, not a different site, our, our ranking in Google was dictated only by our brand and not by our job content. Um, and certainly as we changed names as an organization last year, um, that is a little bit of a negative if you don't have those Google friendly URLs. Um, okay, onto the last slide. Um, I think one of the important things to understand as well is, is that from a usability perspective, as you can see here, that our job search um, has the predictive intelligence job search functionality. And what you can see here now is if somebody is typing in for medical sales, it'll give them a list of the opportunities that are on the site that, that um, uh, the individual can then click on and go through to the roles. But it also might give more rich information around other articles on the site or points of interest or articles of interest that the, that the candidate might um, want to uh, engage with. So I think in summary, it's really important to have a really decent site, but it's only decent if the site can actually be found by Google. If it can be found by Google, you'll be attractive to more candidates. If you get more candidates clicking through, they're going to want rich content because they're going to be uh, want to be engaged in that site, which I think now is a good point to hand over to the next presenter. Yeah, one of the things that um, yeah Adam's talking about that yeah actually um, it's not just about you know, active job seekers in terms of the you know looking for jobs. I mean, it, you, what you want to make sure is that. Yeah, everybody who's looking for a job can find your website. But I think it's, you know, one of the things is about the, the, the other content, the, the, the actual information, what it's like to work, the employee stories that effectively are, sh are showcasing your black brand. And, you know, we, we use it in terms of what we call the sort of like a content pyramid. So, you know, effectively you have jobs, you have content, and you have people, the people that actually work for your organization uh, and what it actually is like to be uh, part of that organization. Um, and I think, you know, Vicky, this is something, you know, you uh, as, you know, Atkins and, you know, as SNC Lavlin, you know, have seen in terms of you've been on a journey. So perhaps it's a good opportunity to talk about, you know, some of the things that you've done as a, as a business over the years. Absolutely. Thanks, DJ. And I, I think just to give some context for, for the guys that are on the call. Um, so, so Atkins was acquired um, a couple of years ago by a wider group um, called SNC Lavalin. And um, I think for most of you on, on this call, probably part of your careers, you, you will go through an acquisition at some point. It seems to be the way of the world at the moment. Um, and from a talent attraction point of view, it can bring with it some challenges. Um, and obviously for your careers website, um, when you start to bring different brands together, you really truly become global. Um, Atkins was global, but we had some small footprints in, in several regions. Becoming part of SNC Lavalin meant that we were now a truly global organisation. And I think with a careers website, the challenges that brings is that you really want your candidates to have more of a tailored experience. Um, and that's what the platform gives us. So if you are in Asia Pac, you want to see content that's relevant to Asia Pac. Likewise, if you're in the UK, um, and I think candidate experience and candidate journey has always been paramount to what we want um, the careers website to do for us. Um, one of our challenges as well, again, as some of you will face, is around sort of that brand equity and maintaining brand equity as well. Um, so really difficult to do that from a content perspective. Um, but again, the platform allows us to do that and bring all that content together. Um, one of the things that we found um, was important that projects are what attract a lot of people to our organisation. We're an engineering consultancy. We work on some major projects and, and people are attracted to that. But one of the things the career, careers website has to do is it has to bring those projects to life. And I think it starts with the projects, but then it goes on to the people that are running them and working on them. What are their experiences like? How can you showcase that on your career site? Because at the end of the day, that's what candidates want to see. They know the project, but they want to hear from the people that are working on those projects. And that's where the, the content is really key. Um, the way that the content is shaped, we've got an opportunity to really bring to life people's stories. So what you're seeing on screen there is very much a kind of a, a day in the life of. 
Um, so again, that people hear from, from the individuals um, who are actually working on those projects. Um, we've tried to include a lot of video. Um, I've got some um, talent attraction um, advisors that work really hard on, on gaining contact content, apologies, from, from all across the organisation um, um, to make sure that it works well with the platform in terms of that tailored content and that tailored approach. Um, the, obviously, the website that we have at the moment is the key point to raise is how the website links content and jobs together. So what you can see there is you've got jobs that you're looking at, but then below you've got related articles. So very much again around that tailored experience where people are seeing, yes, the roles that they're interested in, but content that's aligned with them to, to engage their interest and really make sure that that's, that would be the roles for them. Uh, the final bit, and when DJ did my introduction, he obviously mentioned that I'm quite passionate and I lead on EDI and i um, across Atkins. Careers site has given us a fantastic shop window to talk about our EDI journey, and it's really given us a platform to talk about that. And I think what's nice is with the related articles and the blogs, we often get a lot of our employee networks, our EDI networks, to contribute to these articles, um, and we get a lot of our employees to contribute. You'll see there around flexible working, and I think that's the great thing about the platform is it really allows that sort of um, if you like, pick a mix of content and, and really helps people understand what the organisation is like to work in. Brilliant. Vicky, that is absolutely fantastic. I think, you know, Atkins and Essen, the wider you know, family in terms of SNC Lavalin, you know, it's, a, it's a very, you know, very complex organisation. And it really is. It's, a, it's about using the, you know, the, I think what you guys have done really well is use that content to sort of like, just give an insight into what it actually is and tell the story, not just about the employees, but what you actually do as an organization. And, and that's certainly become very important with you know, attracting young people in early careers. Uh, yeah, I know you guys have done a lot of work you know, with STEM in terms of you know, attracting you know, people at school age uh, into the sort of like to start thinking about careers in engineering. Uh, and that it's not just a traditional male dominated sector that uh, women have, have forged great careers. Uh, and are doing so, which is, is brilliant. And I think the employer brand piece is very, uh, you know, very uh, relevant, and it's about bringing that employer brand to life. And I think that's one thing, you know, Ben, you know, at Yodel, you've you've done uh, an awful lot to sort of like, you know, use your career site to to actually talk about what you do. So perhaps you know, good opportunity to talk about what you've done there. Yeah, definitely. Cheers, DJ. Hi, everyone. Um, so when, um, probably last year, when we started our um, employer branding project, um, when we were um, looking at the kind of EVP and the pillars and what, what, what really makes Yoda from a people perspective, you know, it was very, very clear early on um, that our greatest asset as to why people join us and stay with us is our people themselves, which I think for any organization, if um, if your people are your greatest uh, assets, um, you're probably doing something wrong. Um, so when we started to um, kind of scope out, design and build our career website, we really wanted to give um, a real kind of human um, and people element. So a lot of the content um, on the careers website, um, especially around our drivers, um, which I think is on the the next slide, cheers DJ. Um, you know, we, we really we really wanted to give um, people a real insight to um, the specific roles that we have, whether it's a um, HGV heavy goods uh, driver or a employed delivery driver or self-employed. And the for me. The best and the only way is to literally let people talk. No scripts, no kind of can you follow this method, can you follow that method, just literally let people talk and really kind of give their story. Because I think, you know, I know it's, um, it gets talk, it gets a lot of uh, discussion bandwidth now, but kind of brand advocacy, you know, that the best brand that we have um, are our people because they own it, they breathe it, and they, you know, they kind of develop and own the culture. Um, one of our um, initiatives that we've been working on, and nicely kind of carrying on the, the DNI element from Victoria, uh, is really kind of opening up our driving opportunities, uh, not just to, because um, uh, traditionally it has been a, a male-dominated um, industry. We're really opening up now. 
Um, so we wanted to get some real um, kind of case studies and real kind of e examples and real life. So, so for example, Yasmin um, at the bottom right there, um, one of our many um, LGV drivers. Um, and when we when, when when we were speaking to her and many of the, uh, other people in the business, you know, we found absolute superstars. Um, so rather than listening to you know, for example, no disrespect to our chief exec or our board, but you know, let's really give the people the microphone, give them the camera, and kind of tell um, get them to tell us our kind of story, if that makes sense. So we've had a lot of success around this in terms of you know we're kind of attracting people through video, through good content, um, and through that kind of really really the kind of genuine um, face of the business um, and that did build a little bit of a, a perfect storm because obviously because of the content more visitors more applications um, we needed a way to convert uh, and to make, make sure that obviously all the applications that we get um, it's not just a numbers game it's a quality game as well so obviously Yodel everyone knows who we are you know what we're a delivery business and we're very much a technology driven business so for example a lot of our drivers have have mobile apps our customers have the app they can change what day or what uh, date or time the deliveries get um, dropped off etc so we needed a way to actually kind of take all these great um, candidates great quality of candidates because remember uh, you know one of the key things that we're trying to do is attract the people that will suit us so using our kind of employer brand as a magnet um, and we employed um, chatbots um, for our two biggest kind of problems so what you're seeing on screen now is one of our match me bots so you can see from the screen it's fully mobile um, optimized um, and basically what our candidates can do now they can actually land on our careers website um, click um, on one of the various um, pages whether it's a excuse me an employer driver a self-employed uh, an employer driver a self-employed driver etc um, and that the match me bot will actually take candidates um, through a bit of a um, seek uh, an information seeking process um, so we will ask you can see uh, my uh, lovely uh, friendly chat about Emma and um, so Emma will ask um, ben um, the, the candidate in question lots of questions around um, the requirements of the role and almost kind of qualifying that candidate and ask, answer any questions so this is almost working like um, an faq um, and I'll kind of uh, talk slow, but Emma needs to kind of catch up a little bit. Come on, Emma. Um, and the reason why we kind of did this is, you know, recruitment traditionally has always been a nine to five um, business or eight to four or whatever the hours are. Uh, but as we all know now, you know, we live in um, an IoT, Internet of Things world. Everybody wants to do things in their own time. And what we've really discovered is, you know, to us, candidate experience is not something that we've created. Candidate experience is something that the candidate owns and it's something that should suit them. So the, the match me bot that you're seeing now, we are literally going through this with the candidates, um, answering very simple questions like, you know, can you, um, our parcels weigh 30 kilos, are you okay kind of handling those? Um, are you okay driving a van? But one thing that we've also done as well is because, you know, we, we have to be very, very careful. You know, when you use things like automation and chatbots, there is a risk that we will lose the kind of the human touch that we've worked so hard to develop with our content. So you'll see there, um, that's uh, Natalie, one of my uh, fantastic resourcing managers. We actually recorded content that we will share on the chat bot um, that we've used, uh, that we filmed using the mobile phone. So we wanted to create very kind of gonzo style content to make sure that, that the human element is still there. Um, so once Ben, the candidate has been through this, you can see lots of questions have been asked. Um, Ben's put in his, uh, his postcode, or his old postcode when he used to live in Halifax. Um, and what Emma has done, Emma's gone away picked the vacancies that are relevant to Ben um, and they, he will be able to click on those and take them through and like any good process we're asking for uh, some feedback there and also as well we're offering a mobile phone uh, and not mobile phone number a landline number if people want to um, want to speak to somebody further and what this has really allowed us to do is um, as I've said it's, we, we now have a truly 24-7 uh, uh, resourcing function when it comes to answering candidates questions but we've also now replaced the telephone screening with a chatbot screening as well. So yet again, candidates now can actually screen themselves um, at any given time. And some of the data um, that it's um, that 
obviously we, we've got from a platform that we use um, suggests and tells us um, that as many people use a platform outside of work hours than within. So what we've really done there, you know, we've looked at the persona of the people that we that want to hire, you know, they may be in shift work, they may be in a care profession, whatever other industry they're in or personal circumstance, we can now really work around them rather than us. Um, and what's that's resulted in, um, our conversion was probably around about the 10% mark from the traditional um, telephone screening with the use of the screen me bot that's gone up to above 40 percent so not only is it working for the candidates and giving them a great experience it's all it's also working from us um, illustrating you know good efficiencies in the hiring process um, and a good return on investment on the um, on the platform use as well brilliant ben that that's really interesting i think that's yeah, there's two things that's highlighted there is a case of one is uh, you know, making sure you don't lose people for the application process because you, you've, you've qualified them. Um, but also the fact that actually you're making you're allowing your recruiters to be more effective. And I think it just shows that actually yeah, it's one of the key things I always say. It's a case of you've spent all this time engaging and attracting them in place, talking about employer brand that's excited. You know, don't forget that you know, you've now got to convert them into an application because you've, you've invested that time. And I think you know, how many people will recognize this as the first stage of an application? You know, so whether you are CIO, you're on um, you know, Aperture, Success Factors, Workday, you know, this, this often is the first stage. And you know, we know that you know, you're gonna lose, you, know, you lose um, between 40 and 60%. Um, and that was one of the things that you know, several years ago, uh, you know, when, when we were looking at the you know, Atkins career site, um, that it was really important to Atkins to, to, to not lose these quality uh, people. So, you know, Vicky, it's probably a, a good point to come back to yourself and, you know, the, the journey we've been on with you know, Taleo initially and then uh, Workday. So the journey with Taleo was obviously at the first we were told that we couldn't do it in terms of improving the, the actual application. Um, we swiftly brought Format and, and Oracle together who own Taleo and obviously helped them um, to, to, to sort of get to the solution that actually was quick apply um, and we introduced that and it's fair to say that on introducing it our applications, completed applications went up by 50%. Um, so the final thing to mention um, before I close my section is um, that obviously after the acquisition we obviously had to bring several different ATSs into this and obviously with Workday we've now had to obviously introduce the quick apply as well um, and we've managed to do that with uh, the collaboration between sort of Workday ourselves and um, and, and Format. Um, I think that's all from me DJ. No that's I think that's I think it's a good point I think it's a case of I think it was the, initially the challenge in terms of the applicant tracking system I think uh, you know it was the comment computer says no came up several times um, but you know it's a case of you know that actually yeah, all the technology is there. It's just asking the right questions and using the right pieces, which is why, you know, we've now got, yeah, I think it's, we've got, you know, the stat, yeah, quick apply into Workday into Leo, but also uh, for some people who want to use the standard Workday functionality, we've also got a, a workflow into that. And we've also got the early careers as well. So from a front end user experience, the, uh, the journey, you know, the career site is one and it automatically takes people through to the uh, other area. So, you know, thank you for, for reiterating that after you know, we lost, lost uh, audio. Um, so in terms of just, you know, in terms of just some key things, just to sort of like, you know, to, to wrap up with, um, I think there's, you know, the, there are four uh, things that I sort of like think in terms of looking at your career sites objectively. So, you know, the first one is, you know, is, is it almost like a hygiene factor? Yeah, everything these days needs to be found by Google. And it's a question of looking at whether your uh, vacancies, if you're ty typing in a specific job title and location, do they appear? You know, can they appear? Um, and then it's also about actually, it's the user experience. We all know how to use e-retail. We all book our holidays online. Um, and it's making sure that you, know, you can find, you know, people can find what they want easily uh, on the career site. And there's no dead ends. Um, the final piece in terms of that attraction engagement is around, can you tell your stories? And, and when I say that, and you, can you keep adding them or changing the content? Yeah, you know, there's so many sites out there where they have a little wonderful video. You know, Ben mentioned videos. I have a great video, and it's the same video two years later um, because it's not something that can be easily updated. Uh, and I always say it's a case of, yeah, if you it should 
check you know can you add can you can you create a page can you create a page of content can you create a campaign page in around 20 minutes if you can't then you know it's a case of you you can't be reactive because it takes too long to actually manage and then finally don't lose people at that final hurdle um you know do you have to log in or register apply for a job yeah if we had to shop like that every time i, I shared a, a video on uh, linkedin which was uh, from bbc wales about you know if yeah, online uh, was like uh, going into a shop. You know, would we ask all the same questions? Um, and finally, if you haven't recently, yeah, go and apply for a job on your own website and and see what it's like. Um, so, yeah, so that's it from 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 everybody. Um, perhaps I think we've had some questions coming through uh, as we've been talking. Um, so let me just uh, have a look. Bear with me a second. Um, so. One that, uh, classic one here, why can't Google find my jobs? I, I, I think this is one that comes up very often. Um, so yeah, I'll answer that one just to, just to start with. I think it's a case of, um, it's quite simple. If you go to a job on your uh, career site uh, and you look at the actual URL, if it says your, if it says Taleo, if it says Avature, or any of your uh, applicant tracking systems, effectively those jobs are on a completely different domain. So Google sees that as a different domain, sees them being on your applicant tracking system, and effectively you're making it hard and sometimes even impossible. Um, so yes, that's the easiest way to check. Um, here is another one that actually this one might this one might be for, for good one for you actually, Vicky. Um, where do I start creating content? Um, good question, which we asked ourselves right at the start of the project. Um, and I think one of the things that um, one of my guys in my team's done a fantastic job of is, is building a network of people. Content is out there. It's, it's out there in your organisation. Um, and particularly from sort of employee network groups, um, you know, social groups, things like that. Actually, they're the guys that have got the great stories to tell. So it's about really building that network and, and harnessing that content that's already out there. It's not necessarily expecting you to have a constant pipeline from your marketing team or actually getting your own individuals to be marketeers. It's about tapping into those networks and having those employee ambassadors that will provide you with content. Um, but equally as well, it's about sort of a, a sustainable flow of content. I think DJ mentioned you've got to keep your content fresh and exciting. So whatever you are tapping into, make sure it's sustainable and that you can constantly keep that term content updated. Yeah, I think that's a, a very good point. Uh, it's a case of continuing. And I think one of the things that I found over the years is actually, um, you know, when you actually start you know, engaging with the business, actually they get quite excited about, having the opportunity to actually tell their stories. Uh, I don't think I've worked with a, a company out there that hasn't you know, been uh, excited, whether that's the finance team or whether it's the digital, digital team or it's where the drivers, as Ben mentioned. So I think it's getting those brand ambassadors. Um, oh, this is a good question. Um, so somebody, somebody's just mentioned they'd love to get a new career site. Um, who's the champion? Who do they go to to, to make things happen? Um, Adam, you've probably been in this several times, so maybe one for you. Yeah, DJ, no problem. Uh, both organisations where I've in, introduced new, new sites, it's got to be the business. Um, I think initially when I when I joined Empower, there was a there was a sceptical uh, sort of view or uptake on, on on us introducing a new career site. Um, but as soon as you get the business on board and can explain to the business the benefits that you're going to get be it speed, be it time, be it quality, be it cost, um, they'll be your greatest advocate and use them internally uh, to badger whoever it is that's going to fund the site um, because they, they certainly will be able to, to, to push the right buttons. Cool, that, that's brilliant. I think that's one of the things we covered in, um, if, you, if you go onto Google and just Google format ebook part one, uh, there's a there's a whole uh, ebook about building the business case with some great uh, thoughts and ideas from people like Adam on that. Um, Final question, just to wrap up. Um, I think, yeah, Ben, this is very, very on, in your area. Um, got a question here. Um, I mean, we're, we're inundated. They're in retail, inundated with applications, and they're having to use long application forms in their ATS uh, to um, filter people out. And what's happening is people aren't completing the application form. I suspect a lot of people recognise that. Uh, ben, you've you've done a lot in terms of, you know, improving that. Uh, what would you say to people? 
Um, I mean, I, I'd say you probably need to come to the realization, and I think um, I think I actually heard uh, Tim Sackett say this in a, in a Chad and Cheat podcast. But I think I think that the, the future of volume hiring, whether it's retail, sales, care, logistics, or kind of uh, transportation or whatever, you know, I I think we really need to be quite conscious in terms of you know candidates at that level will probably have three or four or five applications on at the go if you've got something that takes more than five minutes they are not going to stick with you without being rude so for me i look at things like automation like we've done with a chat bot and um, i probably look to remove things like the need for a cv so for example if, if it's an entry level uh, sales position you don't need to know what they did two or three years ago. Obviously, it's all in the assessment, behavioral, cultural, um, you know, kind of SJTs, that that kind of thing. Um, and I think it has to probably mirror what you do as a an overall organization. So, you know, if you look a lot of retail now, if I go online, if you look at things like Next, ASOS, Amazon, it's quite slick, it's quite kind of fast paced, but yet the recruitment process isn't. So I think, yeah, look at things like automation, you know, look at things like a chatbot um, and really look to condense that application process and you know it's, it still scares me that why well, it, it's 2020 and there are some organizations that still don't have a mobile optimized career site that you cannot complete um, a job application using your mobile using a cv from a dropbox or using maybe a linkedin profile um, so i think maybe kind of map out where you can put those efficiencies in um, you know and hopefully that will uh, not only increase experience but bring a good quality of hire through as well cool thanks ben i think the final thing i'd add to that is in terms of yeah one of the things obviously you you, you mentioned the chat bar i think it's something we we've got in terms of you know you often see pop-ups on site trying to capture information but it's the sort of thing that uh you know you could use you know, chat bots or you know videos you know in terms of to to pop up on specific jobs to actually you know maybe filter people out of the front and not suitable so one of the classic i always say is a case of yeah, one thing we're, we're looking at with a couple of clients, uh, specifically Mitchells and Butler, who went live um, yesterday, is for, you know, for bar staff, it's like, you know, down the line, it's pop a chatbot in terms of filtering, but also, actually, why not pop a little video and say, before you apply, watch this, uh, to actually give a real insight into what it's actually uh, like. So, um, thank you to our panel. Thank you to uh, Vicky. Thank you to Ben. Thank you to Adam. Really um, appreciate your time. Um, and thank you to everyone um, who joined the webinar. I hope it's been useful and uh, we'll be sending around um, a link to the video um, yeah, within the next day or so, so you can share it with your staff. But uh, thanks everybody and um, goodbye.